Greetings, everyone. It's time to continue with the amplifier project. Well, I want to get this thing on a heat sink and start doing some tests on it. However, I found another problem here, another bug. Well, I put the wrong trimmer value in here. It makes setting the bias quite difficult. That is a 10K when the design calls out for a 1K. So, you know, it goes from 1 to 10K, or a 0 to 10K rather than 0 to 1K. So the setting bunches up tight on one end of this control. So I need to get that out of there and put the correct value in. Problem is, I don't have the right value. I do have this one. This is from the uh, thermal stability video where I got the thermal stability real nice. But these, these are like 25 turns. They're really nice. Uh, kind of expensive though. I didn't want to use expensive parts on this prototype board. That's why I used the TO220 version of the 2SC5200 and 2SA1943 transistors. But anyway, I got to get that out of there and put this in its place and then get this thing mounted on a heat sink. All right, I have the new 1K trimmer on there. I was able to recover this for future use. So let's hook it up and see what happens here. Okay, I only have the amp on 9 volts plus or minus 4.5. I don't want to blow the thing up without a heat sink just yet. Bias is kind of high right now. 110 milliamps. Well, minus what the rest of the circuit's using. So let's see if I can adjust this easy enough. Oh yeah. Several turns. Much easier to adjust. Okay. Well, now it's time to find a piece of aluminum and see if I can get this thing mounted up. I have to look through my box of pieces of aluminum and see if I can find anything. Okay, so this is my solution. I couldn't really find anything I wanted exactly. So I had this eighth inch thick aluminum bar. I actually bought this off of eBay. There's a seller on there, I think he's 6061 dude or something like that, it sells aluminum. So I drilled holes and tapped it, and I'll get this thing mounted on to the little amplifier. I should also mention I got heat sink compound, shoulder insulated washers, mica insulators, and I have some screws here that I can use. I trimmed them down so they wouldn't go all the way through this aluminum bar. That will allow me to put this on to a heat sink for better uh, heat dissipation. Of course, this is way too small to act as a heat sink. This is really just a heat spreader. Okay, I have the little heat spreader mounted on now. i got these torqued down. Little mica insulators so that it doesn't short because the rails are on the tabs of the output transistors and to help with heat dissipation I clamped the spreader onto this piece of aluminum I had in my scrap box a bunch of pieces of extra aluminum that came out of that uh, projection TV set I brought home one day so yes now this allows me to start testing this amplifier Houston, we have a problem. This is why you don't celebrate too early. So what I've done, I turned the voltage up to plus or minus 15 volts and playing with the bias control. And I noticed the uh, current draw was just jumping around random. So we're getting this noise, which turns out to be some sort of oscillation. 
and uh, let me ground the input because we are picking up noise yeah let's adjust this here he, yeah this is oscillating that's for sure uh, we're on uh, one volt so we got about one two three three and a half volts peak of this oscillation so when I turn this up let me adjust this trigger here so it's more stable on this part the oscillation those peaks as you see as I turn it up is actually an envelope of this very high frequency oscillation and yeah, that's 39 megahertz. Very high frequency oscillation. It's 1.1 volt RMS. And like I said before, that's 1, 2, 3, yeah, about 3.5 three volts peak to peak. So yeah, this amplifier has a serious problem here. So... Yeah, I'm going to have to look at what that problem could be. I kind of expected something like this could happen. Now, I hope it wouldn't, but part of me expected this would happen. So now I have to go through and see what the problem is. Okay, so I've been tinkering around a little bit, seeing what's going on here, probing around the amp. I get the oscillation whether or not I have a load connected to the output. You know, this is from the output, of course, right now. And I probe around, and of course, being a feedback amplifier, that signal gets carried all the way around through the amplifier, so it's, it's hard to pin down what the cause is. But I'm going to tinker around and see what I can do. There's some things you can do, like take capacitor like a small film capacitor and bypass certain sections of the amplifier and see if that gets worse or better and that might help locate the problem so at this point I'm going to stop well I mean I'll come back in the video here but I'm going to turn off the camera and play around with the amplifier and try things and see what I can do Okay, it's actually a couple days later now. I couldn't get on this thing for a while. I had some other things to do. So now I'm back on this project. And, well, I did play around with it and tried a bunch of things. I added a 1K resistor in the vast stage here. Uh, I guess it's better if I show you. Yeah. Uh, And this current source in the VAS stage, on the base of this transistor, I added a 1K resistor. This type of current source, you know, having two active elements, it can be unstable. So it's recommended to put a resistor in there. So I, I put a 1K resistor right here. And, well, it really didn't change anything. I did bypass with a capacitor from here to here just to see what would happen. It seemed to, you know, drop that oscillation, not completely eliminate it. But anyway, putting that resistor really didn't do anything. I'm thinking about removing this transistor here and just going with like a Zener diode. Well, I need the dropout of this current source to be very low because this will swing to the rail. I don't want to harm the ability for it to swing to the rail on the um, positive part of the voltage swing. So probably a couple diodes here would work. I haven't done that yet, but I might try that. Um, what else? The phase compensation, I have a capacitor here. Very common to do this in the amplifier on the uh, 
VAS stage amplifying transistor is to add a Miller capacitor for compensation. I just went with a pretty typical value of 100 picofarads. You know, that's when I uh, actually built this thing on the board. That's not something I added now. but So yeah, it does have compensation, and I tried to change that value, and it really didn't do anything either. See, the thing is, uh, with that 40 megahertz oscillation, it seems like a local loop stability issue. In other words, parasitics in certain parts of the amplifier might be making those parts go unstable. Pretty high frequency to be instability from you know the negative feedback and the phase shift around the entire amplifier. I don't know, just thinking out loud here. Another thing I tried was I put Miller caps across the output from the collectors to the base of the driver. 100 picofarad again. I did it in the upper and lower transistor and it really didn't have much of a difference. I mean it still oscillates with a load or without a load. Uh, there's a few things I haven't tried yet but I'm going to you know poke around maybe like I said, I want to change that CCS, and that constant current source, in other words, and see if that has any effect. Another thing that could be possible is a, a bad part on the board. You know, I could have damaged a part when I was playing around with it. And I've seen that before when I was playing with a counterfeit TDA2040 chip. And it's even in my video where I short-circuited its output, and because it's counterfeit, it doesn't have short circuit protection and it you know it blew the chip and after the chip was malfunctioning it was just an oscillator it you know it quit being an amplifier and it made it an oscillator so perhaps there's a malfunctioning part I mean that's a possibility I don't know it's at this stage I'm just kind of thinking out loud here and trying to figure out a solution now this is where I could use your help. If you're an engineer and you're very familiar with uh, power amplifier design, uh, what's my problem here? Like I say, it's because of the high frequency oscillation, it's like an, a local loop instability. Uh, tracking it down, how in the hell do you track it down on a global fed back amplifier? What else should I look for here? You know, like I said in the other video, let me get my drawing in here on screen. I really doubt it's the uh, ground and supply rail problem. You see, here's the capacitors. You know, I don't know if you can make anything out of the sketch, but you know, the capacitors here electrolytics and I have these ceramics here as well 0.22 microfarad ceramics and the output stage has its own leg off the positive and negative rail it has its own lead the VAS stage has its own lead off of the supply rails and of course the input stage has its own leads current sources have a bypass capacitor on them and you know I kept these high current circuits here for the output away from the smaller signals as best I can on this small board I, I really don't think that would be an issue I have this ground lead surrounding you know a lot of the input stage I could run a lead up here I don't think it's that an issue with shielding or anything like that. It could be, but I don't know. It, it's really misbehaving. It's just oscillating, sitting idle here with or without a load. So it's got some major issue. It's just a, a big fail at the moment. Well, I think I'll wrap it up here. 
Looks like I have some work to do. This is a pretty major snafu. It pretty much puts the brakes on this project until I can get it figured out. You know, like I said, this amp has to be unconditionally stable. I don't want to release a product that's a piece of junk. And right now, this amp is essentially a piece of junk. It, you know, it's got a major issue. You know, I figured, well, maybe we'd run into oscillation problems during step response tests or, you know, other signal tests. But this damn thing is oscillating just sitting here idle with a load or without a load. And I've tried some things and it's really not doing anything. So do I have a duff part on the board? Maybe there is a mistake. You know, something's not put in correctly and I missed it in the schematic when I was hooking the thing up. This is where I'm reaching out. I really could use some advice here. How do you track down these problems? You know, in a feedback amplifier, I mean that signals all over the place in the amplifier. So uh, I got to figure out how I can track that down. Well, I guess that's going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching. Hey, you want some hooch?